Out there in the audience, how are you today? I'm good, brother. How are you feeling? Okay. So tell me, what do you think about the Deontay Wilder Zone situation? Well, you know, it's a decision by both parties to be made, and his people seen the way where he could be better off without signing with him, so it's a reason for it. You know, because there's always two sides to a story. Do you think they're trying to box Al Heyman in? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, Al Heyman has some top-notch fighters he's advising. So, I'm noticing these other promoters is trying to dip in his fighters and swing them their way. Because they, they saying that Al Heyman's not doing right by it. As far as what I'm saying, these kids, are getting, they're getting shot to titles. They fighting on television consistently, and they have a name. And due to the fact that a lot of people can't afford uh, regular cable, they can see fights without cable or basic cable. And that helps the public get recognized, recognized fighters out here. Do you think it's an attempt to get Al Heyman out of boxing like they did Don King? Well. I'm going to say that, and I don't think they really got, they really got Don King out of boxing. I just think he's, he done slowed down, but I don't think they really got him out because he can come in any time and throw a big show. That's how powerful he is, the greatest promoter of all time. But Al Heyman, the way, the way he, he's doing it with television, you know, so the average individual can watch a fight. I think he'll be successful. I don't think they're gonna, uh, they, they can't move Al Heyman. He got too many fighters and he got too many champions. Do you think it was wise to turn down the $100 million? Well, it, uh, you know what? I, I, can't really, I can't really speak for that position. For them, to me, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I would advise my crew Let's look thoroughly into it before we say no, but in order, in order for them to turn it down, it had to be something that's going on, on the other side. It's got to be other offers just as good, and maybe even more, you never know. But for them to turn it down, something else is going on, there's other offers on the table. So would you say they definitely have a backup plan? Most definitely, Al Heyman's a great businessman. You know, he's a great businessman. He knows, he, he knows the business of boxing, and he knows what he's doing. So what other options do you think Wilder has at heavyweight for, uh, uh, as far as developing fights are concerned? Because you know Joshua, he has to be with the zone. Fury, he has to be with the ESPN. What other options does Wilder have? Well, they're going to have to come together one way or the other because of the championship belts. They're going to have to uh, come to some type of conclusion on these fights because of the championship belt. When it comes to those championship belts, that brings people together, promoters and fighters, to get this fight going on. It's very important. It's, it's nothing personal, it's a business. So explain to me why it brings everyone together. And well, why it's good for the well, well, because like you say, the zone, Al Heyman, they're gonna have to come together eventually with these fighters, and it, it goes to show you everybody can work together to a certain point, especially when it comes to that money. It makes a difference. Money is the reason why. In your opinion, who are the top five heavyweights out there today? You know, I got the. Um, I like. I like Wilder. I like Fury. And what's that? Oh, uh, uh, the from overseas, White. I like him. Dylan White. Yes, yes, yes. I think with. Uh, uh, I, I, I kind of like because I, I like I love his determination, even though he got in trouble for uh, enhancers. I love his determination. That's I'm, I'm really high on him. And but I also like uh, um, I can't think of this kid name from Houston, big tall Nigerian kid. I like him. He's real decent. 
How do you think Dylan White does against a Wilder or Fury? Well, you know what? If, if he's prepared right, I think he'll do good. Because he has a punch. And he take a pretty good shot. Even though he doesn't look too good in some of his fights. He, he looked like an average fighter, but I've seen some in him the last couple of fights that convinced me to say he could be one day be the champion. Because he, he only, has only lost against Joshua. Do you think power is enough to carry a fighter in the heavyweight division today to a championship? No, no. You got to have a skill set. You got to have a skill set. Power take, plays a big part, but you can't knock everybody out. You got to have a skill set going into the late round. You can't knock everybody out. And the reason I ask this question is Wilder did knock out every opponent except Fury. And the, the, that's the one person he did knock out. And he got a draw. Yes. Yes. I, well, yeah, I could, I could see that. I could see that. But Fury, is, Fury was the type of guy that's... You know, he, he's a tough, Fury's a tough fighter, man. You got to give it to him. He Irish from England. You know, he had a, had a lot of pressure on him. You know, from way where he lived and to come to be where he at now. He's not an easy guy to just to get just to knock out and get rid of. You know, I got to give it to him. He fights with a lot of heart and country behind him. Well, back in the day, did you have dealings with uh, the white Kwame or Eddie Mustafa Muhammad? Now, I worked in a gym with Eddie Mustafa Muhammad at Pal's Gym in Las Vegas that was owned by Richard Steele. Very interesting character, good brother. I love it, I love him, that's my man. He made me feel welcome in the gym and he, he, he's a good old dude to have in the gym. Tell us the Eddie Mustafa Muhammad story. Well, Eddie, Eddie is the type of guy that um, you be in the gym, he work with you serious, and that's where he joke with you, he make you know how to relax you. He know how to get a fighter. And after he work upon our gym, he relax and they listen to him. You know. And Eddie Ed, Ed, has the type of attitude to make you feel accepted. He he could be like after training, he could be something like a Sanford and son. Okay. Have you going all the time. It's like me and Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great personality, you know. And you, you can't beat him, that's why he's still successful. i never seen him in an arrogant moment. He always been down to earth and humble. And I, they, I admire that brother to the fullest. He's a good dude. What do you think about him as a boxer? Where would you rank him in the light heavyweight? Oh, I rank him in the top, in the top five. I would rank him, yes, yes, yes. Yes, he, you know, Eddie had his problems later on in his career, which, you know, I'm, I've been discussed because that's my brother, but I don't care. But you know what? He showed a lot of heart and a great right hand. He knew how to set you up with that right hand and put you to sleep. You know, and I remember him as Eddie the Flame Gregory in New York, a middleweight out of Brooklyn back in the late 70s. What would you say was his defining moment as a fighter? Um, as a fighter early, he fought Saad Muhammad in a 10 round middleweight fight. That fight there, because I happened to see that fight. And I seen, when I seen them two, the way they fought, the scientific side was knocking everybody out. But he ran up on Eddie, Eddie outboxed him, outsmarted him. And I love both of those fights. When I seen that, I said, oh, he gonna be Okay. When he, when, he, when he fought Saad Muhammad, it was a 10-round middleweight fight. Saad was knocking everybody out. He fought Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Eddie outboxed him and outsmarted him. When I seen Eddie in that fight, I said, this brother going to be a champion sooner or later. So would you say Eddie Mustafa Muhammad's uh, talents lie in his skill or his punching power? Well... Eddie had good punching power because if you watch that Johnson, Marvin Johnson fight, he was hitting Marvin Johnson so hard to the body, he lifted him off the canvas. So Eddie had great punching power. I don't know personally what happened to him late in his career. I don't want to, if I did, I wouldn't discuss it because that's my brother. But 
later on, it seemed like, you know, like it was a situation he didn't make weight for the second uh, Sphinx fight. I don't know what happened, but it seemed like he started going down a little bit from there as far as career-wise. And I can't say. I can't say. But he had a great trainer, Slim Robinson, and uh, Aaron Snowwell back in the day. Who would you say is the best light heavyweight to move up to heavyweight? Oh man, that's hard. But you know what? I like the effort of Bob Foster. I love his efforts because he fought the toughest in the heavyweight division. But I got it as far as moving up. And being heavyweight, I got to give it to Michael Spinks. Michael Spinks? Yeah, because I don't want to mention no name, but another guy moved up to heavyweight, but he had a little help from his friends. And I don't want to get into that, but Michael did it the natural way. Okay, when you say help from friends, are we talking about PEDs? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So there was a light heavyweight that moved up to heavyweight, and he was using juice. Yes, he was. And Michael, naturally. Yes, yes. What do you think made, made Michael such a good uh, heavyweight coming up from light heavyweight? Well, you know, he they picked him. They picked the right fights for him coming up in heavyweight. Jerry Cooney, individuals like him, that that was big, that was easy to hit, and then, and then they knew Mike had a better skill set, and so that would made him great, you know, getting there and and the decision over Holmes. Which Holmes didn't help it. Saying the uh, comment about Rocky Marciano, he didn't help it at all. What? Now, coming up, we have uh, Usyk. He's going to move up from cruiserweight to heavyweight. What do you think about that? And what do you think is, uh, how do you think he's going to do at that weight? Well, you know, but he's going to get tested. They put the right fighters in front of him because a lot of those guys, man, they, they, they put these old guys that's barely walking in front of him to get knockouts. But he's going to be tested because he used to be a champion. So he's going to have to fight somebody with decent skills. So we'll see. I can I don't, you know, I never really looked at the I've seen him fight a couple of times, but he, he, he's nice. He's got a nice skill set, like I was telling you earlier. A friend of mine named James Ali Bashir trained him when he was a contender all the way to a champion. So before he went to Lomachenko's farm, so his skill set is, is very is basic, but it's, it's, it's timeless, and he, and he know he knows how to box. What skills did your friend accuse him? Did he help him with balance, football? balance, jabbing, uh, blocking, and and Bashi is a is, is a very conscious trainer on 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 his fighters getting hit, you know. And cause if you see the kid when he fought, the, fought for the title, he was blocking real good. He's moving his head. He had a little slickness on, on, with his power. Now he could punch and he could box. And so Bashir had him sitting down on the shots and had him more accurate. How do you think Usyk does against the top names at heavyweight? The Wilders, the Joshua, the Fury. I mean, these guys are super big, but Usyk's big too. Usyk's big, but he, he, he felt that power from them. He felt that pressure from those guys. That's why when a when, when guy move up like that, they're going to have to bring him on gradually with other uh, heavyweights with somewhat power to see how he's going to react. Because if he get tagged by one of those guys, that's it. You know, he got to, he got, they got to bring him along to see but how can he handle heavy punches.